This is a rock, which you've probably seen before because they are used for a million different types of things, like building walls, gardening, or even as a tasty holiday treat. Ugh. But what if they could help me get into my house if I forgot my keys and been locked out? This obviously isn't a cost-effective way of getting back into my house, so I'm going to take some inspiration from these and show you how this sort of everyday problem can be fixed with... Ugh. One of these. This is the brand new Chidi Q1 Pro 3D printer, which we were lucky enough to get our hands on a few weeks back. So whilst we go about designing and making a solution to our problem, we will also be putting Chidi's latest high-speed Core XY offering to the test, giving you the lowdown and letting you know our thoughts. But before the new printer arrived, we had to brainstorm some ideas for our project. And as this was going to be a little side project, this time we decided to ask the cleverest person we know if there was a better way this simple rock could help me get into my house. But my limited stonemasonry skills meant every time I tried to gently make a hole in the rocks, they just kept breaking and I was quickly running out of patience and rocks. So at this point, I decided I had to do the only thing I know how to and load up my PC to 3D model and print my own rock. Which after much examination, I decided should be pretty simple and designing it myself means I could easily add a hole in the bottom to store my key like this little one here and I finished that first prototype just in time to take delivery of the new Chidi Q1 Pro so I set about unboxing it and setting it up which took no longer than 20 minutes and I think was the quickest unboxing and setup I've ever done even beating the rapid Anchor Make M5C setup it's literally just a quick whip around taking off the packaging and these zip ties removing these four screws and firing through the calibration process which is basically auto leveling and then input shaper calibration and that's it we're ready to go but before we get back to the rocks with every new printer we get we tend to run the same first test prints through it before deciding if it's going to make it into our lineup or not and they are a benchy obviously this all-in-one test print from printables and this fidget nozzle which is particularly good because it has a small spring on the bottom to test the bed adhesion some difficult overhand and tolerance areas and a click and lock mechanism inside that actually needs to function afterwards and all these came out amazingly i'm even going to go as far as saying this is probably putting out the same quality at speed as our far more expensive printers so now that we were happy that everything was looking good i set off the first rock print and after just over an hour i had my prototype which was well, rubbish. The printer itself had actually done a great job, but at the moment, this needs a lot of work. Firstly, this bottom lid was just a poor idea to seal the key inside, because making a mechanism to actually click that in and out easily would be a real pain. But taking some inspiration from this little desk organiser, I decided to change the lid on the bottom to a sliding compartment instead and sent the prototype number two over to the printer. The next few days were a case of printing prototypes and making some minor adjustments in my spare time over and over again until I had a final sliding base I was happy with, which also had a little latch at the end to hold it in securely, which obviously I got right first time. So next up was the rock itself. Because even though the printer was putting out a great surface finish, the curved top meant we were getting a really obvious layering effect. Let's imagine these slices of bread are each layer of a print. If you had a perfectly flat top, you wouldn't see as each layer is added to the print. But if you had a gradual rising slope like on our rock, you would begin to see each layer as the printer travelled up the incline. But luckily there was a really simple fix for our model which was to orientate it at an angle which actually meant less supports in total and it came out with this lovely smooth finish with only a very small bit of stepping at the top. But I still wasn't happy. If I wanted this to be discreet and hidden from fees, then it needed to look a little bit more like a, well, a rock. So I got my iPad out and loaded up Nomad Sculpt, which I'd never actually used before, but I'd heard so much about how quick it is, I felt like this was the perfect time to try it out. Which I was initially impressed with, because I managed to make this pretty cool looking rock first time, until I realised I didn't actually mask the slidey bit inside, and basically left all these triangles over it, so it just didn't work anymore. And annoyingly I couldn't just go back in and cut these bits out accurately enough, so I just basically sculpted the whole thing again, but made sure I masked up every tiny corner of the mechanism this time around. Amelon Filaments had also recently sent us some of their pretty insane rock PLA, which comes in pretty much any type of rock colour you can think of, so after loading up my filament I hit print and waited for the final results. Now, 
whilst that's printing, I can safely say that this process took a whole lot longer than it should have. And that is 100% down to me rushing the design from the beginning. Like not doing any prior planning before starting the design, guessing key sizes and getting them wrong, forgetting to put supports on prints and trying out a new sculpting program I'd never used before and just winging it till it looked about right. But the Chini Q1 has been an absolute joy throughout since the moment we got it fired up and that is likely due to the impressive specs. Which we always tend to skip over these when talking about printers because, well, you can read the specs if you want to and a lot of you will probably know more than we do about the tech side of things too. But what we do care about when testing out new printers is how it performs in everyday life, like on one of our projects. And I've got to say, I really, really like this one. Now I am going to give you a little bit of detail about why it's won me over so much, but it really is as simple as everything just works exactly as I would expect it to. It's super fast, the touchscreen and user interface is lovely to use, the calibration is quick and easy, the build plate is one of those excellent gold textured sheets so no horrible glue, Chidi Slicer is basically Prusa Slicer and we all know how good that is, and there's even some really big points in there I was shocked were included for this price, like a camera that links to Chidi Slicer for monitoring and a fully enclosed heat chamber which has been great for us and not just for a warping or specialist filaments point of view but in our particular setup our studio is outside and could quite often get below freezing overnight for example, whilst we were printing this project, we had a big frost and this was the roof of our studio. But instead of spending a fortune heating up the entire studio for a quick print, I just popped into the slicer, set the chamber to 17 degrees and set the print off. Job done and I won't go bankrupt because of our energy bills. All that being said, you'll know if you own a 3D printer already that there are probably some little irritations lurking in there somewhere. And we have only had a couple of weeks to test the printer out, so it's early days, but the only one so far is the classic filament loading issue. And Chidi have definitely tried to solve it with this extended arm thingy which makes loading in easier than when it was on the back but it's pretty naff and the whole pushing the filament in and pulling it out when unloading is just a massive pain especially as it looks like every time you change it wants you to cut the filament manually above the extruder But is this little nozzle wiper and poop bin at the back here a little clue that some sort of AMS type system is on the way to Chidi printers soon? I might be looking too much into these little features that have been added, but it does seem like all the legwork has been put in. And as far as I'm concerned, the more printers that have an AMS system, the better. But anyway, back to the point. After only one hour and 40 grams of filament per rock, I had some finished kind of rock shaped key stashes. So now I can just pop my key into my rock and slide it closed. And whilst the filament is definitely helping, the rocks need some more sculpting to make them more, well, rock-like before we release the files. But for now at least, I'll never be locked out again. And if you're forgetting your keys, you can print our rock stash too by signing up to our Patreon and supporting us, where you'll also be able to print these and more designs and have a commercial license to sell physical prints in your store. 